So hi everyone. Uh, today I will talk about the parallel streaming graph uh, partitioner that we developed on Flink. And the outline for uh, today's talk is that I will start explaining briefly about graphs and then streaming graph partitioning, followed by the problems that we faced while implementing the state-of-the-art streaming graph partitioners on Flink, and then our solution, and in the end, the experimental results. So uh, graphs are data structures that helps us to uh, represent relationships between entities. And in real world, if uh, let's say we use a social media network, we are connected with each other so we can form links between the users. And uh, then again, we can also make groups of the users as subgraphs. Partitioning is important uh, for a use case where the graphs get bigger. So for example, we have uh, the uh, Scandinavian countries and people in Scandinavia, let's say they, uh, the red edges, they show the links between the people inside the country, and the green edges, they show the links ac across the border, if people know uh, somebody else from the other country. And when we want to process uh, such a big graph on a distributed system, we want to partition it. The naive approach to partition such a big graph would be to do randomly, and what we will end up with is having partitions containing a mixture of Swedish people data with Finnish people data, or maybe from Norway, and then we will need to communicate between the partitions a lot in order to synchronize, because Swedish people might know more Swedes compared to the Norwegians. So uh, it's better to partition smartly uh, in a way that we end up having partitions where we contain uh, users from Sweden in one partition and maybe from Norway in the other so that we have less communication cost between the partitions. Um, another uh, challenge of graph partitioning is that it is an NP-hard problem. If we try to reduce the communication cost by putting users of Sweden together and Norway together, then we end up having imbalanced partitions because one country might contain more population or more people compared to the other. So we want to also do load balancing. So for the sake of load balancing, if we move some, let's say in the second example, some Swedish people data to the other partition, then we will have more cuts and the communication cost will increase. So we need a good balance between the cuts and the load. The other challenge is to process power law graphs because most of the real world graphs, they follow power law degree distribution. And what is, it means is that people like uh, us, Adrian and me, I mean, we don't have much followers on Twitter, let's say, and we form a major part of the population of the world compared to celebrities or uh, uh, big company CEOs who have big fan following, but they are less in numbers, but they have more followers. So such graphs are called power law graphs, and the problem with partitioning them is that these high degree nodes are important. And the state of the art algorithms such as DBH and HDRF, they are uh, good to partition power law graphs, especially the streaming ones. So these two algorithms only work for uh, streaming graphs. And right now we are not focusing on offline graph partitioning. We are talking about online partitioning where we don't have any information about the incoming stream of the graph. And whatever we learn is on the fly. So how do these algorithms work on the fly is that they keep some state to make smart decisions. So the state is based on what they have seen so far in the graph. And for HDRF, if it has seen some vertices, it will update the degree count of that vertex and also keep the partition information, like where did it place the vertex uh, in which partition. And for DBH, it only keeps the vertex ID and the degree information to make a smart partitioning decision. So uh, this state, is easy to implement when we have a system which allows us to share the state if we are doing parallel partitioning. But the problem is that uh, when we want to implement it for Flink in the data parallel model, the state uh, sharing is difficult or we need to make some design decisions of how do we share the state. Because the default partitioning is hash or key-based partitioning, which requires no state. And Adrian will now present the solution uh, of how do we share state in Flink to implement HDRF and DBH. And the solution is uh, WinBro. It does not stand for the winning brother, but for Windows and broadcasts. 
And those people who know uh, <laughs> Flink, they, um, they know about the state sharing um, pattern uh, based on broadcast and about Windows. So these are the two main functions that we use. And um, we are also, of course, talking about streaming. So we use the data stream API. And we developed a two-phase partitioner. So we do the vertex degree count in the first step. That's what um, um, was just explained in the first um, part for DBH and HDRF. And then based on these um, vertex degrees, we have the, um, the partitioning assignment. And now we can see the, the DAG of Flink. Um, I integrated the, the parallelism inside here. So um, we start with reading edges. We start with reading out edges. Um, in the second step, uh, the degrees are aggregated or counted. Uh, this one is kind of a helper method uh, that I will explain later. And here is the second phase where the magic happens and we make the decision uh, where to place uh, the est these edges. To make this a, more, a bit more um, tangible, um, I make a dry run and uh, explain you how it works. So we have a graph of 11 vertices that sum up into 14 edges. And uh, for simplicity, um, we have a parallelism of two. So we have two task managers running. So the first step is uh, we read edges. And uh, I talked about that we use Windows, so we key by the source vertex, and the source vertex is, for example, the one uh, here and the one here, and every window here is um, it's differently colored. So you can see we have different windows, and these windows are now sent as one um, batch, let's say, to the second step, the degree aggregator, and in this one we get different tables, vertex degree count tables, and this one is, let, let's say, at time one, time two, time three, and so on. So for every, for every window, there's a new outcome. And it basically sums up the degree information of all vertices inside one window. So for the first window, we have vertex one with two, um, with degree of two, and uh, vertex two with one and five. And the same thing happens in parallel on the second um, task manager. And finally, we also go down and send them to a second um, operator, where we um, also define these window IDs. And these windows IDs are important to join the stream later on. And now this is where um, the broadcast comes into place, and the broadcast is, as I just said, one, one by one, these tables are sent to all task managers. So that's why it's called the broadcast. Whereas the edges that, were, that were simply relabeled are sent to one particular task manager. And when we go uh, to the right on this uh, DAG, we now see the same here. And now this is where the joining mechanism comes into place. And why is it important? Because Flink does not give any order guarantee. So we could not know that the window one will arrive here at first, but maybe window thir uh, three will come first. And at the same time, we also need to make sure that the, the edges um, come. And so we need to make a match. So in this animation, I will show you how this, this works. And um, as I said, there's no Olga guarantee, so it's kind of random. The first thing that arrives is a broadcast of uh, window 8. And uh, now we are waiting until the edge of window 8 arrives. Um, but now an edge arrives, and then another edge, and another broadcast, etc. This is like completely random, sort of. And um, based on the window ID, we now can identify that there is a a match, and we know that the partitioning decision can now be made based on all information that we, we know until now uh, for the degrees of this um, graph. So we send the first um, edge to the final partition. And this one continues now. We see the second uh, one, which is ready, and we continue again, and so on. And at some point, 
we have um, processed all edges and in the second, um, like parallelism two, in the second one it, it happens um, two. And the result is this. And these are now custom partitions uh, in Flink and these can be used as an input for, uh, for future applications. To make this um, in a simpler way to, to show it to you in code, so we have an edge stream that's from the Jelly library for graphs. Um, so it's keyed by the source vertex. We can, uh, then it's windowed, processed in this degree aggregator and then broadcast it. Um, the relabeling is um, to get this edge window ID. And here in this data stream, we connect both this partitioned edge, uh, windows edges and the broadcast stream into one and processes according to the logic that I just explained here. And finally, we do the custom partitioning. So that is, um, well, it was, what, what's a bit complicated maybe, um, but one thing that uh, you might have seen is that we have a lot of state because we need to store all information about the degree and also the assignments depending on the algorithm. And since memory is not unlimited and also quite expensive still, uh, we needed to do some cleanup. Um, and so we introduced some periodic cleanup, um, like removing unnecessary broadcast information on, on different task managers, and also state eviction uh, policy on, um, on low degree vertices, because uh, in these power low degree um, algorithms, we, we define that uh, high degrees are more important, so we just flush uh, those which are not that important. And the validation is, um, again, explained by Zainab. Okay, uh, so in our experiments, we measured the partitioning quality in terms of the communication cost and the load balance. And then we measured the partitioning speed. And in the end, we measured how well the applications perform, in particular the streaming applications, uh, while using these custom partitioning techniques. So the applications we ran were connected components, bipart tightness check, and triangle count. And in the table, you can see some uh, social media graphs. So Skitter and Orkut are small, and the big ones are Twitter and Friendster containing some billion edges. And I will only present the application result due to shortage of time. But if anyone in, is interested, then uh, they can discuss with us about the partitioning quality result. Uh, so about the connected component application, so what it does, it, it gives the uh, component ID of every vertex if the vertex is connected with other vertices in the same component. It assigns the same component ID and you get that as, out, 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 as output for the application. And we use the Twitter graph as input and the parallelism was four. And we measured the throughput in terms of edges processed per second for the application while running uh, DBH, HDRF, and the default hash partitioner. So uh, after every like uh, few minutes interval, we measured the throughput, and we could see that DBH has higher uh, throughput uh, compared to HDRF and hash. And um, uh, since this application relied more on the data locality, so if you put the neighbors, the neighboring vertices together, then the application would exchange less state. But for some applications uh, like bipart tightness check. Uh, the results were opposite. So hash was better for such application because it did not rely more on the data locality. So it doesn't matter much where you put the vertices because the state that is exchanged is not uh, so big. And uh, so for such applications, it's rec uh, recommended not to use any complicated partitioner. But since most of the applications, they rely on data locality like batch applications and also streaming applications such as connected components and triangle count, so it's preferred to use DBH or HDRF. And then in conclusion, we would say that uh, Winbro provides us to uh, a solution to implement algorithms such as DBH and HDRF. And also they give higher partitioning quality compared to hash. And in the end, better runtime for data locality sensitive applications. And we would like to give special mentions to Pyrus, who is here with us and uh, Ahmad, and they played a good role in making design decisions for our use case. Also, if anyone is interested to contact, you can email us and ask more about the project. Thank you. 
Uh, so my question is how you decide the window size of your uh, approach. So you do doing a windowing uh, for that. So mm, yeah. So during development, um, we played a bit with the size, and um, we I we found out basically that uh, the smaller the window, the better. Um, and so it was quite small, like a couple of uh, milliseconds, basically. And that's because um, we found out that there's a back pressure if, if uh, the degree information, like imagine you wait 10 seconds or let's say even 10 minutes um, until something is processed, then at some point it, it takes a long time in the second step to, to process everything and to make the decisions. Whereas in the f if you do it kind of constantly, like near to streaming one by one, then the information is uh, processed faster. OK, thank you. I also have a question. So um, in this um, edge relabeling step, you said you're basically assigning this window window ID. Where does it come from? Or how, how, how do you know what window ID to assign? It's a, it's a custom join operation. Mm, since all the different methods that we tried before were not um, satisfying, um, just to give an example, like watermarks get a new timestamp whenever they're processed by some operator, so we could not uh, rely on them. Mm, and the window ID is basically um, generated based on the edges that are inside. And uh, so we could, at the end, we could identify that they're the same. Thanks for the talk. I was just curious, I don't know if you mentioned it, have you published your code online or do you plan to uh, contribute this back to Jelly or some stream graph library? So the code is on GitHub. And uh, I think we can provide you a link after the talk if you're interested. About integration, I mean, we, we will discuss with the Flink guys. <laughs> That's why we are here. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thanks again for the talk. Thank you.